Okay, so I've been doing a little bit of thinking here, and I figured out a very clever way to measure leakage in old capacitors. And uh, I'm testing here with black beauties and molded capacitors. These are all paper capacitors, they're garbage and they all start to leak as they get older and the paper breaks down and uh, basically the paper is the dielectric between the aluminum foil and the other aluminum foil and what happens is uh, the paper breaks down with time as moisture gets into these and uh, when that happens well we all know what happens with old paper, right? It yellows and it becomes brittle. And uh, when that happens, these start to electrically leak. What that means is that electrons will pass through the dielectric, causing these to act as a resistor, basically. And this causes a bunch of problems. It throws off the bias in tube amplifier circuits. And uh, that is not good because it throws things off in a vacuum tube circuit. And uh, in some cases it can really throw things off and cause things like tube red plating or even destruction of tubes. Because they leak onto the control grid and bring it positive. Which basically turns the tube on fully. Because the control grid should be negative, it should, pulled, should be pulled negative in reference to the cathode in order to control the bias of a tube accurately. I have seen it happen here in my very workshop. An amplifier using black beauties as plate to grid coupling caps. The output tubes started to red plate after a little while. And the bad thing is you don't notice it immediately, but it does eventually happen when it's been running for a while because they start to leak more and more and more as they heat up usually. And here I have a few examples of leaky capacitors. I have these junk pyramid capacitors and I have this Sangamo. These two are extraordinarily leaky. They are actually the reason that some 6BQ5 output tubes have fried in an amplifier that I restored. When I got it, the tubes that came with it were so fried that there was literally burn marks on the glass. That is how insanely hot those tubes ran. And that is because these capacitors were leaking 10 volts positive on the control grid of those tubes. No wonder that those tubes red plated. A quick little side note here before I go. Uh, you do not at all need to have expensive fluke meters like this. You can use any set of meters as long as they as long as they have enough resolution to actually show you you know uh, differences which most meters will. You can use any two meters. The only thing that's important with the meters is that they must have the same input impedance and the way you can check that is just look at the specs of the meter it should say. Hi everyone and welcome. So today a bit of a helpful video perhaps, hopefully anyways. <laughs> um, I am uh, being a little bit clever here today and I figured out a easy way if you have two meters with the same input impedance uh, how to measure capacitor leakage and uh, stick around because this is a very very simple way of doing it this is all you need to do. This is your DC source. In my case, the DC source is AC coming out of my rectifier and then hitting this rectifier here. Uh, and then you connect a voltmeter in series with the capacitor under test. And then a voltmeter across the capacitor under test. And uh, we all know that in a serial circuit, the voltages should be equal. Alright, 
So the voltage here should be equal and here it should also be equal, right? If Because the capacitor should not even exist to the circuit if it's not leaky. Because DC is blocked by a capacitor, so no current should take this path. So, in an ideal situation, if this capacitor is good and not leaky, once it charges up, there should be no difference in voltage between this meter and this meter. Alright? However, if this capacitor is leaky, and a leaky capacitor, circuit-wise, looks like a resistor in parallel to it, like this. That is a leaky capacitor. Because that is essentially what what they look like to a circuit when they start to leak. And uh, this way, if this capacitor now has leakage here, some current will flow here through the leaky capacitor to ground and then the voltage will not be equal anymore. See this, how simple this is and how it works? It is extremely simple. And here's the setup in reality. Excuse this wire, it's the charger to the device I'm using as a camera because the battery in it is not that great. Uh, here is our DC source coming off of the rectifier. And we have the variac here, and it's set to 240 volts exactly. And I got it unplugged now, obviously. Uh, be very careful if you do decide to use a variac, because they have no isolation from mains. So <laughs> all parts of the circuit will be at mains potential when it's plugged in. Just be aware of that. I'm also going to be plugging my variac into my combined bulb limiter and bench lights here so that we get a low current limit on it just in case something shorts out here okay so here's the test setup right now we got the rectifier and the DC here and the ground of the rectifier goes to one side of the capacitor and to the ground of this meter which is this meter and the positive goes in series with this meter which is that meter and the output here comes here to the right side of the capacitor. So this is the circuit. It's a bit of a mess. So it's easier to show you the actual circuit here. Okay, so let's apply power now. We've got a brand new VEMA capacitor here. Uh, unfortunately, I stuck it in upside down. So but I'll show you it later. So we'll go ahead and we'll plug in the power. And we'll, I'm going to show you what happens here. Here we go. So right now we got 240 volts AC going in. So we have probably like 350 DC coming out of the rectifier. Uh, and as you can see, the voltage is exactly equal. And uh, this capacitor is there for good because it's not interacting with the circuit. It's blocking DC like it should. So this capacitor is good. And obviously I wouldn't expect anything else. It's a brand new capacitor. So, let's unplug this. Before you touch it, make sure it's discharged. Now we're going to test a leaky capacitor, a known leaky capacitor. This capacitor here, an old black beauty made by Pyramid. Uh, 0.05 microfarads, 400 volts. And uh, we're going to see how leaky this capacitor is. So let me get it hooked in here. The VEMA capacitor has been replaced with the old black beauty here. And let's let's plug it in now. So now we can see here that the voltage is no longer equal. In fact it's quite a bit unequal. And that is because this is acting like a resistor. So the voltage drops here and here are no longer equal. Because some current is taking this path to ground now. 
because this capacitor is leaky and it's actually very leaky this capacitor actually fried an audio output tube that is how incredibly bad it is but uh, yeah as you can see the voltages are not equal so the voltage here and voltage here are no longer equal meaning that this capacitor is leaky I have a little bit of a selection here of black beauties I have a few 0.1 microfarad ones here these ones aren't that leaky they are still leaky but they're not that leaky and here I have a 0.047 microfarad which is only slightly leaky as well and here I have a Sangamo type 33 this one is very leaky so we're gonna we're gonna measure a few of them and we're gonna be able to see that you can determine that different capacitors are different amounts of leaky let's check the Sangamo see how leaky it is whoops yeah that one is actually leakier than this one <laughs> very 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 leaky terrible these capacitors would definitely fry tubes for sure they are extremely bad yep extremely bad let's try some of these ones and then let's check some more modern caps again Okay, we got one of these point ones in there now bigger black beauties and let's plug it in and as you can see this one is also leaky it is not as leaky as these capacitors it's a 2 volt difference here this one had more like a 5 or 6 volt difference but it is still leaky and should not be used okay we got this old capacitor from about 1941 from uh, one of my restorations here uh, let's see how so terrible it is applying high voltage to this might not be a clever idea but let's do it anyways ho 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 it's basically a dead short check this out that capacitor is shot look at that wow yeah this thing is basically shorted that is how bad this capacitor is it is basically a dead short so yeah if this was in a tube circuit, in a plate to grid for example, this thing would red plate the tube almost immediately. This is a shorted capacitor, basically. Here I have here I have a really terrible capacitor as well. And here I have probably paper as well capacitor so let's measure these and see how terrible they are and then we'll measure a few more new capacitors all right so let's plug it in here <laughs> yeah it's extremely leaky this is not one of those capacitors that would fry an output tube in you know seconds Wow, that's extraordinarily leaky. Yeah, not a surprise though. That thing also came out of the 1941 radio. Let's try that thing. See as to how terribly leaky it is. <laughs> also a dead short. And look, it's actually shorting out more. Yep, complete garbage. <laughs> dead short in all of these caps. Okay, let's test this one. This is a brand new 0.47. These are excellent plate to grid coupling caps. I love using these when I fix up or build amplifiers. 
because they are just perfect. They have perfect leads, perfect package size, just excellent. Okay, let's try it. And this is quite a large capacitor, so it's going to take a while for it to stabilize. It's 0.47 microfarads, so pretty large, but it should stabilize here in just a bit. And we will see that the voltages are equal, which means that the capacitor is not leaky. So yeah, here you go. Perfect capacitor. It's going to take a while for it to discharge too, because it's quite large as I said. We could try some of these capacitors here. These ones we can try. These are also some capacitors which I like to use for coupling and stuff in tube amps. CK focus. KT1 kilovolt. Polyester film. I more or less only use polyester film caps because I know that they're reliable. I put those back. Let's connect this one up. Okay, the leads are a little bit too short or thin, I should say, for these probes. Boom! Excellent. No leakage whatsoever. So, yeah, very small capacitor value, too. Okay, got one of those there. Boom! takes a little while to stabilize because it's quite a large value but as you can see perfectly equal no leakage in other words so yeah there you go this is a very simple way to shake capacitors and uh, it really works quite good as well I'm gonna screw this light bulb back in and do that because I think this more or less concludes the video. So this is a very easy way to shake capacitors for the leakage and uh, yeah in some cases you might not even need to take them out of the circuit you can just take these probes and hook them into your circuit in some cases and shake them but most of the time all of these will unfortunately be leaky and uh, all need to be replaced and uh, these ones here measured okay but as we can clearly see by this test they are indeed very leaky